I'm seeing you mentally disturbed. Yes, man of God. But it will come as depression. You know depression? Yes, man of God. Mm. I said it will come, you know depression. Yes, man of God. But this depression will now lead you into mental disturbance. Because sometimes your mind go off the hook. It's like uh, you cannot understand yourself sometimes. Yes, man of God. Mm. It's, this is the problem I'm talking about. It's, it's knocking. It's knocking. There was a woman in our family who was mentally disturbed. She was mentally disturbed. Would, would walk in the street there, walk in the street. Yes, man of God. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Uh, good morning. My name is Habulisiwe Bungu. I come from Mokobatan, Buteti. I am here to give a testimony about Healy and to give a prophecy confirmation. Uh, in 2019, the man of God, Prophet Cedric, gave me a prophecy. He said, I see you being mentally disturbed and this is going to become to come as a depression. People of God, I confirm this prophecy to be true. Uh, it started in 2019 and I was schooling at Wittigenel College. So I didn't understand myself. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was always isolated, I was always angry, I didn't enjoy going to school, because, but I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was always losing weight each and every day, I was feeling sick, I went to the uh, clinic, but they didn't know what was wrong with me. I was always going to school but before the lesson begin i'll take my bag and go back home because i just felt bored and i was always i was always angry but i was just asking myself for well, what's wrong with me so even when the lectures when they gave us the assignment i will always complain i was always complaining in my class and I was not, not doing the assignments. I was not doing the assignments at all. Even during, when, when the test, test ones were written, I didn't go to school to write them. So one of my friends told me that they are writing the test one, but I just stayed at home. So I was, all, and I was also indoors, staying isolated. I was left behind because I was, not, I was not attending the lessons. I was not doing homeworks. And I didn't even write the test once. So I decided to freeze my sponsorship because I was left behind. And I, I realized that I didn't understand what was being taught. So I found it better to freeze my sponsorship. There was a woman in our family who was mentally disturbed. She was mentally disturbed. Would, would walk in the street there, walk in the street. Yes, man of God. Yeah, I didn't know about that, but I went back home. I asked my mother about it. So my mother confirmed it to be true. She told me that one of her aunts was mentally disturbed. She was always walking along the street. So I confirmed this to be true. So I came here in February 2019 as an international visitor. So that's when the man of God gave me the prophecy and he prayed for me. After he prayed for me, uh, I was able to understand myself. I gained weight and I was able to reason well. <laughs> 
Did you get back to school because now you were able to reason well? People of God, I decided to go back to school in 2020, but I was rejected. I applied again. I've been waiting for my sp sponsorship letter, but there was a delay. So I managed to get it in 2021. So I managed to come back to school in 2021. That, and that's when I become, I started to become sick again. I was experiencing dizziness, my hands were shaking, and I just thought it was low blood. So I went to the uh, pharmacy to buy supplements, uh, iron supplements, but it was becoming worse each and every day. That's when I decided, decided to go to the clinic. When I went to the clinic, they did the blood test and Every, they said everything is normal. They told me that this sons, you had sons of people who are suffering from anemia, but, but you, don't have, you don't have anemia. So they said they didn't know what was wrong with, with me. So I continue going to school and I was losing weight each and every day. I was losing weight to an extent that now my head feels like there is a stone inside and it was heavier than, the, than my body. So this was affecting my balance. So when I was at school, I would ask one of my friends to hold my hand because I was always shaking. So she was always, she was always holding my hand Whenever I go to the toilet or whenever we go for lessons, she was always there for me. So the, I, also, I went back to the clinic. That's when I collapsed. So I decided to go back to the clinic. They did the blood test again, but everything was normal. The problem got worse around November, when we were writing the final examination. I was feeling dizzy to an extent that I couldn't read. So after we finished our examination, then I went to Rapa, my hospital. They also did the test again, but they said everything is normal. So I went back. They gave me the medication, and I went back to my home village. Few days, I had a heart attack. That's when I was taken back to a village, village clinic. They did the test again, and everything was normal. It was Friday by that time, and on Monday, my family decided to take me back to Oraba. So I was admitted there. For five, for five days, and I was experiencing strange things because every time I tried to eat some food, I would experience a very sharp pain in my brain, except when I, I ate sorghum. So I was always eating sorghum only, and the problem got worse. So after being released from the hospital, I had a strange uh, dream where I saw, whereby I saw a woman. She injected me, and she told me that this is an injection for COVID-19. So after that dream, uh, I started having chronic headaches. So. The pain was excruciating. And this has affected me because I decided to free sponsorship for the second time. So this has affected me because I've been stagnant in my career. 
I was supposed to my I do degree in counseling. So my this career it was supposed to last for only four years, but it's been eight years now. I'm still a student. I was not able to open my eyes. I was not able to walk. So I was bedridden. So I told my parents, I asked them to bring me to 3G ministry, and they agreed. I came here in February, during the night of the faithful. So I was able to join the prayer line and I pleaded the man of God to pray for me. Dina la meke se galona phepa fa tso bung go tswa moko ba tsana. Bothata yo nna ke nna nna jo o tswa ke sididi bothata ja pelo le go roma mo mele. For how long has your sister been suffering from the heart failure, the dizziness and the headache? Seven months. For seven months now. Okay, what is what is your problem? I have a problem of heart palpitation and I have a problem of there is a sharp pain in my head, so I only eat sorghum. You only eat sorghum? Yes, I can just use it. Come on, look here. Come on. Watch the screen, see the reaction of the sister. Just a touch. She was seated normally a few seconds ago, but after the touch, you can see her reaction to the prayer. Continue to watch the screen. You can see the man of God using his leg as a contact point. During the prayer line, I just felt like my legs were, were chained and I didn't know what was happening. So the man of God prayed for me. After he prayed for me, uh, we went back home. I mean, it was, on, it was on Friday when he prayed for me. After he prayed for me, I went back to the hospital on Monday. So when I arrived, they did the test. That's when they, diag they diagnosed me. The doctor, the results came out and the doctor told me that I had holes in my lungs uh, and my liver was solid. Because the man of God has already prayed for me, I still believe that God has healed me already. So I continue to attend the church services I was always in church and pray. So one night when I was sleeping, I saw the man of God, Prophet Cedric. He told me that he want to pray for me after church. So in that dream, I remained, I remained behind. I saw myself on a wheelchair and the prophet walked towards me. He prayed for me and he touched on my head where I used to experience pain in my brain. And after that dream, I started recovery. I was able to eat every kind of food and I was able to walk on my own, but I was not able to do these things before. Uh, people of God, uh, this is what I was always experiencing. Dizziness, fatigue, because I was always tired. And here is the written collapse. This, this is when I collapsed. Uh, by that time, I was at the mall. Here, this is the test that I did at Oraba. And they just told me that they didn't see any problem with me. And here, it was heart palpitation, headache, and dizziness. 
So I was given this uh, iron supplement, but they were not working at all, people of God. And this, here, this is when I was admitted at Horapa Mine Hospital for five days. And here, after the prayer, that's when they told me that the liver is solid. The same, here it was headache and dizziness. Uh, so, so after the prayer, I was told to go and meet. I was prayed for in February, so I went to meet the specialist in October. So the specialist did the test, and this, uh, this is a letter that shows that I was medically fit. Let us glorify Jesus with our hands. Uh, this is the first uh, x-ray I did. When you look at this x-ray, you can see uh, like something like patches, white patches. These were the holes that were in my lungs. And this is the second x-ray that I did in October. All the patches, now they were covered. It's like they, they were covered by that, this black thing. And this shows that the holes were closed. <laughs> People of God, this is the medication I was using but it was not working at all. These are just pills. These pills, it's like they were making my, dis my dizziness to become worse. These, these are all supplements uh, for iron and for dizziness, but nothing was working. I was becoming worse each and every day to an extent that I decided to stop the medication. What are the differences ever since then? Now I have recovered, as you can see me. Now I'm able to walk alone. I'm no longer feeling dizzy. And the pains that I used to feel in my brain, I'm no longer feeling it. And now I'm back to school. People of God, whenever I walk, I used to experience heart palpitation. So everywhere I was going, I used to carry water because of those heart palpitation. Now I can walk freely for yeah, welcome the mercy to of run. God. I can run. Let us glorify Jesus with our hands. You said you used to have an excruciating pain in your head. You are welcome to shake your head, to press it and check if the pain is still there. People of God, I'm no longer experiencing that pain. Shake your head. Are you feeling any pain as you are shaking it? I'm not feeling any pain. Let us glorify and Jesus with our hands. I encourage, I encourage the people of God to seek the face of God. People of God, we are, uh, we are living by the mercy of God. As the Bible says in the book of Lamentation 3.22, it says, it is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion never fails. Uh, I, and I, I want to encourage the people of God to continue to seek the face of God for the salvation of their souls. Having been restored, Ms. Bungu is given a plate of food to eat, as previously she was restricted to eating sorghum only. She freely eats her delicious meal 
without any complications. Truly, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Sister, as you are eating like this, are you feeling any pain? Do you feel like vomiting? What is happening right now? I don't feel any pain at all. Are you enjoying the food? Yeah, I'm enjoying my food. Let us glorify Jesus with our hands. In no time, she had eaten all the food that was on her plate, and still no problem had surfaced. She begins to thank God Almighty for her newfound healing in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. I can now eat. Thank you, Jesus.